Alright, so if you remember in the last video, I mentioned that I wanted to try and 3D print an entire shock absorber. In this video, I'm going to show you how that went. So this is an off-the-shelf 1 10th scale shock absorber. I'll be using this as a guide to design my own shock in Fusion 360. These consist of a piston body, a spring, and a tension adjuster at the top. Notice these have ball joints in the mounting holes, which allows for more flexibility with your chassis. I want to try and incorporate all these features into my 3D printable design. For those of you that follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen that I managed to 3D print and assemble the front subframe. Everything fitted together perfectly and the geometry all seems to be good. Here you can see the off the shelf shocks in action. The problem with this setup at the moment is that the suspension is just too stiff. The car already has a lot of unsprung mass which is just inevitable with wheel mounted motors. To help combat this, ideally I want a suspension setup that is as soft as possible. This is a design that I came up with in Fusion 360. It's very similar to the shocks that are already on the car, with some minor tweaks to make it 3D printable with as few parts as possible. I was also happy that I managed to include everything that the original shock has, even the ball joints. Everything here will be printed in PETG to provide both strength and flexibility. Some of the parts do require supports to print, mainly due to the ball joints. They're print in place, so they must be in the correct orientation for that to work. I had a couple of failed prints with the spring, but I found that it printed best with some custom supports, like the ones I show here. If you want to know how to add custom supports in Prusa Slicer, I have a tutorial on that, so click the card above. So I 3D printed all the parts, and this is what I ended up with. They're not the cleanest of prints, because PETG and support material are never really a good combo when it comes to the finish. The important thing here is that the parts are strong and flexible. As you can see I did also manage to get the ball joints working as well which is a nice touch. In order to get the thread working smoothly I had to use a tap and die set. This is quite common with 3D printing because there are quite large tolerances. Basically what the tap and die does is just clean up the thread. I was then able to screw on the tension adjuster which is just another great feature of this design. The assembly is very straightforward, but does require a small amount of grease and super glue. The piston drops into the piston body from the top. I added some grease in there as well to reduce friction between the plastic parts. You can then glue on the top piece and the rod end at the bottom. From there you can slide on the spring and lock it into place using the spring perch. As you can see, the shock works exactly as expected. The plastic spring actually works a lot better than I thought it would. It'd be really interesting to try this with PLA and compare the results. The PETG spring actually generates enough force that it's able to take off. With the shocks being the same scale as the originals, they fitted straight into my already existing chassis. First thing you'll notice here is just how more responsive the shocks are. Still hard to believe that these are fully 3D printed. The adjusters also proved to be very useful here to give you a more aggressive response on the spring. So overall I'm pretty happy with how these turned out. They're not perfect and they're definitely going to need a few tweaks. I honestly have no idea how long these things will last without testing, but I will be doing some testing in the next few weeks, but I can say that they do feel quite sturdy in PETG. I think it's fair to say that they won't handle any serious abuse from any kind of large jumps or that kind of thing. But that's not a huge issue for this project anyway since this car is not really built for that kind of treatment. With the motors being mounted directly in the wheels, the bearings in those motors are unlikely to survive any really large impacts. I know a lot of you will be asking about the CAD files and I will be releasing them, but I definitely want to do a bit more testing and tweaking first before I'm happy to do that. That's it for this one, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.